Well, another day, another destination. And last night was another campsite on uh, BLM land. Here, take a look at this. This is out on uh, <clears throat> Highway 9 in New Mexico, just east of Animas, New Mexico. So on the way to uh, Deming and then uh, Las Cruces today. And then uh, find some BLM or forest land out that way, or maybe go a little bit uh, further. But let's see what we got here. You know, something, <clears throat> something I've noticed along these roads. Uh, along the fence lines on either side of the roads is that um, I don't know if you can see it but along the fence lines they've got what appears to be a dirt road but really it is a uh, smoothed out area of dirt and I think what that is is to for the border patrol to see uh, look for footprints of uh, people who I think are have been crossing the border because the border is just uh, a couple miles uh, that way there so uh, interesting I'll we'll have to check that out uh, a little bit further on down the line here before I get off the border area in the meantime uh, you can go uh, like I said on the way to Deming but we're gonna make a quick stop because the Continental Divide Trail actually crosses the road up here uh, not too far away so for those of you who aren't familiar with the Continental Divide Trail it's a trail uh, that goes from Mexican border at the south end of New Mexico <clears throat> up to the Canadian border there and so uh, this is a Continental Divide Trail crossing and we'll take a look at it see what it looks like Okay, here we go. Oops, where are the keys? I got them. <laughs> um, <clears throat> interesting. I right, give you the bearings here. <clears throat> so here's Highway 9. We just came off and turned onto it from here. Uh, that's going east. So we got south here. And excuse the uh, wind noise. So uh, the, the trail starts down there at the uh, Mexican border and comes up here, goes about 3,000 miles up to the uh, Canadian border. And uh, here's something pretty interesting. Let's go take a look at it real quick. Yes, these are water bottles. So uh, what people do, uh, trail angels, they'll, um, they'll leave water for the hikers. This is a pretty uh, dry section, so the hikers have to rely either on uh, water caches that uh, people have put out, or there's uh, cattle stock tanks uh, dispersed throughout the area because this is also a livestock grazing area on BLM land. Um, and you might think, oh, yuck. Cattle stock tanks, drinking from those. <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do. I had to do that uh, when I was uh, my first uh, walk there on the ranches in Arizona. Um, but um, you know, you filter the water, and in those types of situations, you maybe put in uh, water drops as well. So uh, pretty neat. <coughs> Excuse me. Kind of by trail. There's the next uh, trail marker down there. You can't see it. I don't think. Alright, so uh, that was the highlight. Oh, let me show you something else here while we're at it. I have a question. Maybe you know the answer. So, um, all along the, the highways here, since I've been in New Mexico, you know, I've been, uh, we've been as close to a half mile of the Mexican border. But anyway, all along the roadways where the fence lines have been, 
there have been these uh, what appears to be dirt roads, right? And yes, you can see uh, some tire tracks, but all along the fence line through all these miles and miles of New Mexico, the dirt has been scraped smooth so that you don't really see the, uh, the tire tracks. And so I'm wondering, and here's the question for you if you know the answer, I'm wondering if the Border Patrol scrapes these on a regular basis so they can see if there's been any foot track traffic from uh, the people that have been illegally crossing the border and trying to get to points north. So if you know the answer to that question, put them down there in the comments, let me know. It's uh, certainly been an interesting phenomenon to see. Oh, and one more thing <laughs> while we're here. Um, might be able to see, let's see if we can zoom in a little bit here, you might be able to see the straight line that's going across there. That's the old, uh, there's an old rail line there. It was actually built by um, Phelps Dodge Company. Uh, Phelps Dodge, you know, being the company that ran the mines over there in Bisbee uh, in the other video. So anyway, they, uh, they built a rail line to get all the iron ore to points east and they ran the rail line basically along the, the border zone here to get to El Paso and then spread out from there. So that's the old rail line. It's no longer in existence. The tracks have all been torn up, so it's just a rail bed. And I've been seeing the existence of that along the roads here for the past number of miles, wondering what that was. And there, there's the answer. The old Phelps Dodge rail line from Bisbee, Arizona to El Paso, Texas. <laughs> okay, now. On to Deming. So this uh, dirt road is actually very smooth. Um, I didn't really know what to expect, but I thought it would be a little bit rougher. <laughs> you know this this uh, wall. Now that you get close to it, it's noticeable. But when I was still back there about a mile, it was kind of an optical illusion because it looked like it was a. Uh, a flat area of just a whole bunch of vegetation or maybe some water but now look at that you can actually see through it huh. and actually see that it's a wall so let's go take a look at it up close and personal that thing's pretty tall Sorry again for the wind noise. Uh, that's looking um, west. And of course east. And actually if you're familiar with the border down here, um, the U.S.-Mexico border is actually going to turn north and then go back east a little bit until it gets to uh, El Paso. It's like the size of a three-story building. Yeah, take a look at this. So here I am, right? Now, let's go up. I think it's about 30, what, 30, 35 feet up there? Pretty interesting. This stuff was just put down for 
miles and miles and miles. So that's the US-Mexico border. I've been here for a bit of time. I almost halfway expected to see some uh, border patrol folks pull up. I get swarmed at the end of the road there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Could drive down that way, huh? Just follow the border. <laughs> All right, so here's a little quick stop on our way up to Deming. And what's this quick stop, you might ask? Well, let me show you here. Okay, so a trivia question for you. When was the United States invaded? Besides the War of 1812, the mainland of the United States, when was that invaded? Did you say March 9th, 1916 at 4.10 a.m.? <laughs> So this is, uh, this is Columbus, New Mexico, and this right here is Columbus State Park, and as you can see, Pancho Villa and his forces invaded the United States, March 9th, 1916. Yes, he did. And let's go up here to Coots Hill, and I'll tell you all about it. Hill. So early on the morning of uh, March 9th, 1916, uh, Pancho Villa uh, was with 500 of his men, came from roughly the southwest over here, from an area near uh, Palomas, Mexico, which is a little town on the border about three miles away. And uh, they came up this way and around like this here, and then they split off with Pancho Villa and his uh, guy, uh, his uh, commanders coming up here to see, to uh, be able to command what's going on. And uh, 500 men attacked the town here of Columbus, New Mexico. Didn't do a whole lot of damage, but they did uh, steal a whole bunch of horses and, uh, and mules uh, from the army garrison just right down here. Also got. battle didn't last that long and uh, they ended up, uh, besides taking all the stuff and killing a few people, they also burned down a bunch of buildings. And they hooked it on back to uh, New Mexico. Uh, the army regrouped and started uh, trying to chase them, but they didn't find them. And then fast forward another month or so ahead of time, uh, President Wilson authorized an incursion into Mexico uh, commanded by General Black Jack Pershing, if you remember that name from World War One fame go and uh, hunt down Pancho Villa and his guys uh, in Mexico. They never did find him, uh, but they took uh, horses, trucks, uh, airplanes looking for him. Uh, but anyway, remember we passed the town of Achita uh, a little bit back, and the reason why Achita is, um, I wanted to bring that up, is because it was an important part of what went on here. When the um, the American forces, excuse me, forayed into Mexico looking for Pancho Villa, they used the town of Achita as a staging area to go into Mexico and looking for him. So, uh, yeah, pretty interesting stuff. And it's interesting looking at the lay of the land and, and uh, seeing how things unfolded here. Now, just a little town 
in the northern part of uh, Chihuahua, Mexico. Mexican troops came in, or actually Pancho Villa troops came in, did their thing, quote unquote, invaded the United States, and got away. So this is the uh, only land battle that ever happened in the United States. The only land battle that ever happened in the United States besides the War of 1812. Right here in Columbus, New Mexico. And you were there. All right, so now we're just gonna head north towards Deming and then Las Cruces. And I think that'll be it for this part of the trip. Uh, change of plans. <laughs> I'm not going to Deming and I'm not going to Las Cruces. No, I'm going to El Paso, Texas. Because <laughs> I've run out of time for something I gotta do. Uh, so I gotta go into El Paso instead. And then, tonight where I'm gonna camp, I don't know. I don't want to camp in town, but maybe I'll find uh, some BLM spot out in the middle of nowhere in the dark. Let's see. All right, we're here. Where's here, you may ask? I'll show you. <laughs> 